thrilled to welcome a 19-time Grand Slam champion to our desk. Congratulations, Roger, once again. We saw you months ago in Australia, and you told us the 17 are over here, 18 kind of stands alone. Mm -hmm. What do you do with 19? 19, I don't know. It just, uh, it just feels good. <laughs> it's like uh, so many records were, like, were broken here during this uh, championships. I didn't even know all the, the things I, I did. So now that it's all done, uh, it's just a great feeling, you know, um, because this feels totally different to the Australian Open where uh, I, f I was put the favorite ahead of the tournament, whereas in Australia I was not at all. So how quickly things can change and that I was able to to bring it home at the end. Uh, I don't know. It's it, it's crazy moments in my life and I can't believe I'm actually uh, I've won again. We know you traveled for a couple of months with the Australian Open trophy. It seemed to go everywhere with you. <laughs> Is that well, true? So the thing was about the Australian Open trophy is like we finally get the original size trophy. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Because so, it's no always mini smaller me. replicas. So back in the day yeah. you used to get small replicas oh. like this. You would look like, where is it? You know? <laughs> and you're like, I've done all this work to take this thing home. I was a bit disappointed to be quite honest, like back in the day. And so, they gave you the real size. So this year now, since a few years, they give the original size. So when I got took that, home, that, that, that trophy home, I was like, oh my God. Like people were like, Really pumped and very excited to see it. More excited to see the trophy than me. So, <laughs> so I was like, you know, I'm taking, I'm taking it to the snow. I'm bringing it to show friends. And the Wimbledon trophy, the replica we get now, is 75% of the size of the original one. Okay. So, Do you have plans oh. for it? Take it uh, around? Maybe we, I should parade it around a little bit. <laughs> no. Did you sense today in the first game, you know, he hit a ball, like bounced it to the net, uh, three forehand miss. Did you sense he was a bit nervous, or did you see something in his movement that that you sensed that you could take advantage of early? Funny enough, I still don't know what his problem is because I haven't asked anybody exactly what it was. A blister. Okay, so. Um, I couldn't tell in his movement if he was struggling to his right or his left, mm -hmm. and then he was serving volleying. Um, okay, which then makes sense if he was struggling going side to side, why not serve and volley? Because moving forward maybe is easier. I'm not sure, but because I couldn't tell, um, it didn't affect me, uh, to be honest. And because I wasn't actually looking over to see what he was doing on the change events, uh, I just thought he was dizzy the first time around when he called the doctor, because that's why you call the doctor, or because of a painkiller. Yeah. Um, but then at three love, when he called the physio as well, and he did the, all of the retape, I just felt like maybe he was just about buying a bit of time to, you know, slow things down a little bit. But I didn't actually, I couldn't because I couldn't tell. I think my experience helped me through that part, and I heard he also cried at the cha yeah. at the change events. Which if I would have seen that, that would have maybe rocked my boat. But because I didn't see it, actually, I, I, I think it helped actually. Yeah, not seeing it. So what are you thinking? Your two sets to love because you've been in this position many times mm -hmm. before. Were you getting ahead of yourself too much? Because you know, normal circumstances, you're probably thinking, okay, I've got this. Right. But it's a Grand Slam final. It's Wimbledon. You can't really afford to let that those thoughts creep in. Yeah, and drizzles can come in yeah. and you know it could be back and forth back and forth and because I didn't know what his problem was I don't I didn't know if maybe he was gonna come back after a rain delay stronger and actually I was telling myself at uh, two sets to love and two all I was I'm gonna lose this third set because I've never won Wimbledon winning not dropping any That's sets right. at all so I was like so clearly I'm gonna drop my third the third set and so that was my mindset not okay. being to negative take the pressure off maybe to yeah. take the pressure off but I was just like for me I was as I was missing opportunities you know early on to maybe get the crucial break in the third mm -hmm. uh, I told myself well it's normal actually to be maybe be broken and lose the set <laughs> and I think that relaxed me too and uh, I kept uh, you know kept with my game plan and actually realized that I was always able to put him into a difficult position and it was good. And, so, and you know who the last player was to actually go through Wimbledon without dropping a set? Do you know who that is? Oh, uh, wasn't it Bjorn Borg That's maybe? Right. Did you know yeah. the year? 70... You're pretty good with this stuff. 76. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. helping me out. <laughs> so, well, speaking of your game, this entire tournament you were never down. Yeah. And tell me how that frees your game up and what are you doing differently now than when you won here the first time? Well, the first time, I mean, those were different times. I was coming in um, into... I was coaching against you. Right. Uh, I, I came into Wimbledon having lost a French Open first round. So I was uh, not planning to win Wimbledon. Uh, what I remember going through uh, between Paris and Wimbledon, do not read any press because people start to really get to me and tell me like, ooh, this guy's talented, but, but no good at, when it comes to, you know, the crunch time. And so I didn't read any press, and I went on to win Halle. Andy won 
Queens, Queens, and then we met in the semis here. And actually, I really uh, blocked my back as well against Lopez on, on the old court too uh, in the warm-up. And I thought, okay, uh, so Wimbledon, that's over. And I kind of won in three sets somehow. And I was able to recover because I was young and, and started to feel better as the tournament progressed. And I played Schalken in the quarters, who was also hurt himself. Like similar, I think, like the, what Marion had was mm -hmm. blisters. Anyway, uh, long story short, I... I played a great semis and a great finals, but it, it's all more a blur because it was all so new for me. So this time around, I just feel like, because I've been there so many times, you know, you go through the same routines, you know what you have to do, what you shouldn't be doing. And because I'm older, I just need more downtime. I just need to relax more. I can't be so active like I used to be. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a long time ago, 14 years ago. I, I hardly remember a thing. <laughs> it's just amazing, your memory of every match that mm. you have in tournament runs. and. Um, you often point to the most important match you won here was when you beat Pete Sampras right. and, uh, and one of your fondest memories and now you surpassed Pete Sampras. Yes, and that's strange for me because Pete was my hero growing up besides Edberg especially. Um, so to see Edberg cheering for me from the Royal Box, that was cool, you know, like first I was cheer for him, now he's cheering back for me. Same thing was like Rod Labors. Um, it's unbelievable. and. Uh, the Pete match, I didn't understand in the moment itself what a stepping stone or milestone that was in my career and which led me to so many other moments um, because I had no business being Pete that year. Um, I was um, ranked top 30 maybe, um, Pete was going for his fifth and I mean I got lucky in the fifth uh, somehow and played great, I did play great but Pete was not, not playing at his very best and he, he made some crucial errors that he shouldn't have and that, which allowed me to stay in the game or go, go ahead in the game and then margins were so slim that all of a sudden he lost that match but um, that was truly a, a very important match looking back uh, for the rest of my career really. Oh, well done today. Yeah. You stand alone now, number eight, congratulations. Appreciate it, thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you.